friends, it's very good to be with you again. Welcome to our Sunday worship offered by St. Andrew's Salter Lane Church. As we move through this Easter season and share worship together in our own homes, wherever we may be, we greet one another in the name of Christ. May God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. You may like to have a piece of bread and a glass of water with you for later in the service, when I'll invite us to eat and drink these together. But we now turn to our opening hymn. At a time when our consciousness is limited so much of the time to our immediate surroundings, the words of this hymn invite us to extend our vision beyond, to the mystery and eternal being of God. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. opening prayer, I'd like to use a passage from the writings of Hildegard of Bingen. Hildegard was a German Benedictine abbess who lived from 1098 to 1179. She was a person of many gifts, and in addition to her profound spirituality, she was a composer and a writer on scientific subjects. The passage we're going to hear now is a meditation on the divine life that flows through all things. And I simply invite us to reflect on it. Our inner response to the words will be our prayer. And then, after a brief moment of quiet, 
we'll turn to our prayer for the grace and mercy of God. And the responses will appear on the screen. Some words of Hildegard of Bingen. I am that supreme and fiery joy that sends forth all the sparks of life. I am that living and fiery essence of the divine substance that flows in the beauty of the fields. I shine in the water. I burn in the sun and the moon and the stars. Mine is that mysterious force of the invisible wind. I sustain the breath of all living. I breathe in the verdure and in the flowers. And when the waters flow like living things, it is I. I found those columns which support the whole earth. I am the force which lies hid in the winds. From me they take their source. And as a person may move because she breathes, so does a fire burn but by my blast. All these live because I am in them and I'm of their life. I am wisdom. Mine is the blast of the thundered word by which all things were made. I am life. Now our prayer for God's mercy and grace. Please make the responses in bold. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the grace of God enrich us and the blessing of God nourish us. May God cleanse us from our sins and restore us in the divine image for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Before we move on, just to return for a moment to the passage from Hildegard. There's a sentence near the end of the passage that I didn't read, but, but I'm going very briefly to mention it. It goes as follows. I permeate all things that they may not die. During the current crisis, we've become all too conscious of death in a way in which as a whole society, we perhaps hadn't been for many years. I don't think for one moment Hildegard is denying the reality of death when she says, I permeate all things that they may not die. As a person of the 12th century, she will have known that death is all too real. What I think she's saying is that death is subsumed into something much greater, into that greater life within which all things are held and in which we express our trust whenever we gather for worship. We now hear our reading for this morning, read for us by Caroline. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, 
he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. In last week's service, Jenny reflected on the story of the Emmaus Road. It's a story that ends with the two disciples recognising the risen Christ as he breaks bread for them, and then going and telling the other disciples of their encounter with him. Bread features again in this week's reading. Only now we turn to John's Gospel, and to one of the great I Am sayings of Jesus. A few weeks ago, in the story of the raising of Lazarus, we encountered Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Now we find Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. The bread of life. As with so many passages in the Gospels, this verse takes its inspiration from one of the great sections of the Hebrew Scriptures found within the book of Exodus. The people of Israel, having escaped from captivity in Egypt, are wandering in the wilderness, and they are profoundly hungry. God provides them with heavenly bread, which they call manna, and which, says Exodus, tasted like wafers made with honey. The people are to gather just as much as each one needs for each day apart from the sixth day of the week, when they must gather enough for the Sabbath as well. And this will be their sustenance as they journey through the wilderness. Give us this day our daily bread, sometimes translated our bread for the morrow. Give us just as much as we need. It's this story that's the background for Jesus' words, I am the bread of life. In him, John is saying to us, is our sustenance. If we feed on his words, if we're nourished by his person and his being, if we share in the company of those who follow his way, not least as they gather round his table, we shall find our hunger assuaged. There's a complementary passage two chapters earlier in John's Gospel, in which Jesus speaks not of bread, but of water. In his conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, he speaks of offering living water, a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. This too has its antecedents in the book of Exodus. The Israelites complained to Moses about the lack of water on their travels. They're not only hungry, but also deeply thirsty. And Moses is commanded by God to strike a rock with his staff. When he does so, water gushes from the rock. And the water, like the bread, finds its way into Jesus' words in John chapter 6. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever trusts in me will never be thirsty. Manna and water, not a feast, but a sufficiency. For many of us, this period will feel like a wilderness time. There will be a sense of emptiness and absence. Like the Israelites, we may feel hungry and thirsty. Hungry and thirsty for human company, 
for the variety of experience that we've known at other times, for places and buildings we know well, for the experiences we rely on to nourish our spirits. For many, there will be an experience of material hardship, a going without of essentials. This may also feel like a time of wandering. For those of us who like to have timescales and goals, there's the constant question of when things will change, when at least a degree of normality will return. For some of us, there may be a lack of focus for our energies, and we all need purpose of some kind to give us inner strength. And in our wilderness and wandering, according to the biblical insights we've been reflecting on, we are offered manna and water from the rock. Not a feast, but sufficiency. Not abundance, but enough for each day. Our daily bread. And Christ who says to us, I am the bread of life. I'd like us to ask ourselves some questions. First of all, I'd like to ask you, what has been your manner in the wilderness during this time? What has helped you get through? What has proved life-giving and sustaining? And secondly, a couple of times now, we've shared bread and wine or juice in our online Sunday service. For those of us who are part of a church community, we haven't been able to share communion together as we would normally do. But whether or not we're members of a church, we've all been able in these services to share a piece of bread and a drop of juice or wine in our own homes. And to do so in the consciousness that others are doing this with us at roughly the same time. So my second question is, what have the bread and the wine or juice signified to us at these times? What has communion meant? And has it in some way nourished us? Has it perhaps been a different kind of nourishment from what we might receive in a service in church. Having said all this, however, we need to remember that the biblical vision is not just a vision of enough, of sufficiency, of just getting through. The biblical vision is a vision of abundance, abundant life for each person. The manna was bread for the wilderness, but the ultimate goal for the people of Israel was to come out of the wilderness and into a new experience of life, that overflowing life of which Hildegard speaks. As we travel through the wilderness now, we need the manna and the water that will keep us going from day to day. But let's never forget that the divine will for us and for all people is abundant life. To be alive with that greater life that holds everything in being. The divine life of God's spirit. In a moment, Anne is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. First of all, though, we sing Bernadette Farrell's lovely contemporary hymn, Christ Be Our Light. i 
This is the point in our service where we ask God's blessing on the needs and cares of our world and ourselves. You may like to say the responses to each bidding aloud or just to read them to yourself. The response is simply, Lord, hear our prayer. God, this morning our prayers focus on bread. Bread is the stuff of life throughout the world, made from milled grain. We ask your blessing on all who till the ground to grow the grains and on all those who mill the grains once they are harvested. Help us to till the ground of people's hearts so that they can be ready to receive the seeds of your word. Lord, hear our prayer. Bread is made with water, and we ask your blessing on all who strive to make clean water available throughout the world. Help us to use water wisely and support the provision of local services for clean water throughout the world. Lord, hear our prayer. Bread is made adding oil and salt 
the flavor. Help us to add our creativity to your world and to the ways in which we worship you. Lord, hear our prayer. Bread is also made with yeast or other substances to make it rise. Lord, help us to be the yeast in your world, to enable your world and all within it to rise to a greater understanding of your will for justice and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Bread needs the care of the baker, whose skills and patience form and shape the dough into loaves of many different sizes. Let us, Lord, be the bakers of your vision for the world where all shall have enough. Lord, hear our prayer. To bake bread, we need the warmth of the oven, the flame or the taboon, so that it bakes properly. Let us show your warmth in our dealings with everyone we meet and for all those for whom we pray in your world. Lord, hear our prayer. God, who is both mother and father to us all, we ask your blessing on your world as we and it struggle with a pandemic alongside the deep inequality that has been revealed so starkly in these times. Bless all those who are working to care and support us through these days. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us join together in the modern version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we've been reflecting on the symbols of bread and water, I invite us to share bread and water together in our own homes. We're going to use some brief responses composed for an agape or love feast. The agape was a communal meal often celebrated in the early church, and it's still used by some churches today. As usual, would you say the words in bold? Living God, our loving parent, you cherish your creation and we, we praise, praise you. you. With earth, air, water, fire, we, we praise, praise you. you. With our lips, with our lives, in all our diversity, each one made in your image. We, we praise, praise you. you. Because in Jesus you came to share our human lives, our sorrow and joy. We, we praise, praise you. you. Because your spirit is at work today, encouraging, enabling, surprising us. We, we praise, praise you. you. Poor as we are. You give us hope, meaning and purpose. And we, we praise, praise you. you. Amen. Amen. As we share this bread, as we pour out this water, we thank you, God, for our daily bread, for the food which delights and nourishes us, and for the companionship that sustains us. We thank you, too, for drink to quench our thirst, and for the living water with which you surprise and enrich and transform our lives. 
We, we give thanks for this food and drink we can, can share, share, a foretaste of the holy realm. Amen. So let us eat and drink together. God bless each of us as we travel on. In our times of need, may we find a table spread in the wilderness and companions on the way. May we know the fullness of your presence at every meal and in all our sharing. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn, a hymn inspired by the theme we've been reflecting on this morning. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. as we prepare for the week that lies before us. Let us say together the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.